Ok. 7.30 now, here in Brazil, of course, so it's very early in the morning. Uh, my name is Cesar Brod, and I am the Community Engagement Director for the Portuguese and Spanish-speaking regions for the Linux Professional Institute. Uh, uh, here with me in the event, uh, Evan Leibovic, uh, Hernan Pachas, and Juan Ibarra are, Juan Ibarra are participating. Uh, I know that it's being streamed to to youtube i believe or somewhere some, somewhere else so if you guys do have some questions for you please feel free to to ask in the chat room and i'm sure the the messages will be forwarded to me uh, at some point in time uh, well security is something that it's so important for those who work with linux that actually since uh, you start your certification path with the Linux Professional Institute, you have to deal with security. I will show, I'll share my screen right now. What I will show you is the, 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 the main page for our educational material, which is in learning.lpi.org. So I believe you are seeing my screen right now. Uh, if you go to learning materials, go to LPI learning materials, you see that we have already having here the materials for Linux Essentials and for LPIC One. <clears throat> the first exam for our the first exams actually LPIC One is a is, is two exams for the Linux System Administrator. But let's go to to Linux Essentials in here. And what we are going to be talking in this presentation is about the the basics, the security basics for those who start working with Linux. I'll try to be brief. I'll try to be clear, but of course, if you do need more information, you will find it here in learning.lpi.org. And you see, topic five is exactly about security and file permissions. Uh, in this topic, you see several several things such as the, the need to have a good um, password, also, how to secure your files and a lot of people they ask us so you guys that work with linux why are you so into the black screen well there are several reasons for that but if you think about it like the the, the graphic part of an operating system of, of, a, of a system itself is something that's quite heavy in terms of computing power so why for instance if you have a a, a vacuum cleaner, such as a, a, a Roomba or uh, other uh, vacuum cleaners that you have today, pretty much all of them runs, runs Linux. So why should you have a, a graphical interface for those machines? Also, the Linux that you have running in, in your car, uh, but also if you consider the satellites that are around the, the globe, the Starlink satellites, for instance, from that are providing the, 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 the internet. Uh, those all run Linux and you do not have a graphic interface into that. So when you are when you work with system administration, for sure you will need to work in a terminal. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to, to open my terminal and I'm going to show you some of the things that are covered in the Linux Essentials exams that are actually related to security. So once this said, let me share my screen again. There you go. There you have my black screen. I hope you can see it. So I'll just clear my screen with the clear command. And uh, everything that you have in a Unix or a Linux system that relates to configuration is under the etc uh, folder so the etc folder is one of the main folders in the in a linux operating system and inside the etc folder there is a, a file that has to do with user configuration so let's take a look at that that uh, it's not, i believe all of you here already know a little bit about linux but anyway cat uh, it does not come from the, the animal cat, it also comes from concatenate. So cat is saying uh, concatenate to the standard output, which is my screen, the contents of the file 
password. I think it's a password. It's a big file, so I'll just type it two more. Oops. Of course, it's PS, P A S S W G, not password. And let's type it two more. I'm sorry, probably it's because I'm a little bit uh, uh, starting right now here in Brazil. I haven't had my coffee yet, so I'm a little bit sleepy. So here you have the P, all of the users in your system. You see the user that, for, that shows in the first line is the root user. The root user is the super user, the one that can do everything in the system. But let's take a look a little bit more uh, on the other things here in, the, in this line of the ETC password file. X here in the second in the in the second column means that the password for the root user is stored in another file called etc shadow and we will take a quick look at that. Then the root user has the i the, the user ID zero and the group ID zero. Uh, more users uh, should not have uh, the this user ID or group ID. So you should not see this happening again here in this file. So one of the most insecure ways that you can uh, allow people to, 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 to have root access to your system is actually put them in the group ID zero. So you should never do that. Uh, then you have the, the, the full name of the user. The, the folder, the standard folder for that user and the shell for that user. Shell is the program that we use to actually uh, access the, the operating system. So we are using here the bash shell. As you see, there are several other users in here that do not have the ability to access the shell. Actually, it said that the, the program that they, they will access is a program that will take them out of the system right away, which is the no login. Um, one very important user, for instance, is the www.data, uh, which is the, the user for the, 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 the web server. So you see the user of the web server will never be able to log in into the system. Uh, let me move a little bit down. So we have my user here, which is the user Broad, the name is Cesar Broad. I am in the, my user ID is 1000, my group ID is 1000, and I can access the Bash shell. Let's take a look at some other things. Uh, if I try to do cat slash etc slash shadow, which is the file that contains the passwords, I'm not going to be able to do that. It says permission denied. So I have to be the super user to do that. So I will use the command sudo. Sudo means super user, do this thing for me now. So sudo cat slash etc slash shadow. And let's pipe it to more again. Uh, if you guys have some doubts, please uh, ask me uh, here in the chat. I'll leave you. I'll, I'll leave my email to you uh, in a moment, so you can also ask me after the, this presentation ends. So, so here you see it's asking for my password now. Okay, and here you go. Let's take a look at the user board. So here you have my, my encrypted password. So uh, even if you create a very simple password, the Linux system will encrypt it for you. But you must be very careful about your password because even if it is encrypted in here, it is still uh, like a, a brute force attack, like people will try several different passwords. There is actual dictionary, password dictionaries in the internet of the most user passwords. So uh, still, even your password being encrypted, make sure that it will be uh, a password that's not going to be easy to, to, to discover in a, in a try and guess. Another file, let's take a look at the group file. So 
I forgot to type it two more. So let's type it. Here you have all of the groups and you have all of the, the users belonging to the group. So if you take a look at the uh, ADM, you see that my user is part of the administrator group uh, and I'm also in the sudo group. Sudo means that then I can access the system by using sudo, by asking super user to do things for me. Uh, another important file for you to consider is etc sudoers. So here you might have all the other users who will be able to use the sudo command. So the the members in the group sudo are the ones that can execute that end command. So here it pretty much says the ones that are in the group of sudo can do everything. If a user is not in the group, you you can add a line in here with the name of the user and say that he also can do everything. <clears throat> and you can see the, the group of the, the, the ones that are in the admin group can also do all these kind of things. But let's take a look at another, uh, another very uh, important thing in here. Let's take a look at files permissions. So I'll go ahead and create a directory called uh, the document foundation PDF. And now I'm going to move into this directory, this folder. Okay, I'm in there. Uh, if th there is another important uh, folder in the Linux system, which is the proc folder. Uh, the proc folder contains the, the information of the processes that are running in the system, but also information about your hardware. So here are all of the processes running in the system. You see that the, the first process, let's take a look at that. The first process is the one that call other process. So let's just take a look at that very quickly. Um, I'll do a cat. Uh, I'll need to be sudo again, sudo cat slash proc slash one. Uh, no. Not going to let, let's do a, a LS in here. Okay, those are the fi the, the, fi the files that are under proc one, which is the information of the first process that's running the system. Let's take a look at the stat. stat. So you'll see several numbers in here. Those numbers are used by other commands that you list it in a more human readable format. But from here, you can see that systemd is the program that actually is the first one running the, the process that is going to call other processes in the Linux system. Another thing that we have under proc is uh, the CPU info, which brings information about your CPUs. So you see we have one line in here a line called processor, which is the, the, the first processor, the second processor. If we move on, we'll have the third processor, the fourth, and so on. So if I just want to, to know uh, how many processes, processors I have in my system, I can do something like cat, cat proc CPU info grab processor. So there you go, from 0 to 11, we have 12 processors. Uh, I will pipe it to another command, which is the wc world count, and I'll ask wc to only tell me how many lines I will have from the output of proxy CPU info rep processor, 12 lines. So now I could create a, a very small program. Let's do it right now. Nano, I'll call it numproc for number of processors. And I'll say it is a shell script, although for those who already know Linux and Unix, uh, the system doesn't care about extensions. The extensions is for us, not, not for the system. <clears throat> Linux will actually look into the what is inside the file to find out what it is. So in the first line, I will say hash bang, which is the program that I'm, what is the program that, I, that I'm going to use 
to run everything that's under in, uh, that is in the following lines. If I use the, the hash in any other line, in any other position, it's just for a comment. So this is my problem. So here we just have a comment. I will clear the screen. So here in, inside this program, I can use uh, any shell command. And I will say echo. Echo will explain the screen what I'm going to say right now. Uh, this is the number of processors I have. And here I will just execute that line. Cat slash talk slash CPU info. Is that correct? Let's see. I grab processor type wc minus l. Let's see if it works. I'm going to save and I'm going to exit. Let's take a look at our command, at our shell. Okay, here it is. Now let's execute. I can execute by saying bash, oops, numproc, and here it is. This is the number of processors I had, 12. But let's take a look right now at this program that we just created, numproc.sh. Let's use the minus L to give more information about this file. So here is, we see that I can read, write, other users in my group can read and write, and everyone else in the system can only read, cannot write nor execute. Uh, so right now I cannot do something like just call the program, execute from here, numproc, uh, dot slash means execute from here, dot sh. It doesn't work, it says the permission is denied. I need to change this into an executable. So one way of doing that is using chmod, change mode, uh, plus x, means make it executable, the program that I just created. Now, if we take a look again at the long listing of the information of this file, you see that it became green. But also now that we have the X for execution for the user, for the group, user is me, for the group, the group I belong, and for, for all others in the system. Uh, one important thing, if you are working with, with security, you will just give the permissions that are actually needed for people who need to use that. So, Let's suppose that I'm just creating this program. I don't want anyone else to see it. So I will go ahead and remove the permissions for I am, you must think about user, group, and others. User is myself. Group is the ones that belong to my group. You, see, you saw that on the ETC group that I belong to the group ADM and the, the pseudo group. So the, the and also the, my own group. So people that belong to these groups who would be able to, to do things if I gave them the, the, the permissions in the G. So think about the three first letters is for user, the others, the, the ones in the middle are for, for the group, and the ones uh, here at the right are for others, everyone in the system. So I will say change mode for uh, the group and for the others, minus x for this program in proc. Now that let's take a look. So you see now only I can execute. But I also don't want the, the my group and the others to read and to write. So I can do that. Uh, change go minus uh, minus write minus uh, minus read and minus minus write. Let's take a look at that right now. Okay, so I am the only one right now who can read, write, and execute this program. No one else can do anything else. 
Uh, there is another way that I can do that. If you think about for the you, for the user, myself, for the group, and for the others, you have the permissions that can be read, write, execute. Uh, read, um, those are positions in the keys that you turn on and off. So here you have three keys for read, for write, and execute, and they can be turned on and off. So this is uh, for the first position, x, think of 2 to the, the power of 0, which is 1. For the right, it's 2 to the right to, to the power of 1, which is 2. And for the read, it's 2 to the power of 2, which is 4. So it's 4 to 1. So if you add uh, those numbers to the permissions, you will you can use ch mod in an, in another way. You can do something like, for instance, ch mod seven seven seven. So I'm adding four two and one for the user for the group and for the others. Numproc dot sh. And if I do an ls right now, so you see now everyone can do everything. Uh, this is something that is very interesting and administrators will use this a lot other than using uh, something like this uh, GO minus RW because after some time you actually get used with this uh, binary uh, that we represent in, a, in the octal format uh, and it makes life easier for you to change this. For instance, if I want to change it back to a way that I can do everything and the others cannot do anything, my group and the others, I'll do, just do zero, zero. Let's take a look at that again. So there you go, exactly what you wanted. And this is something that for uh, students, it's uh, most of the time it's difficult to, to understand that because we are not used to the, to, to the binary format of, of this kind of things. So let me just minimize that and let me show you one small thing that I created, which is the, let, let me write in the terminal so you'll be able to access. It's a, a small spreadsheet, which is located in broadtech.com. Let's see moderator. And the, the, the thing that will do the CH mod for you and now let me go back to the to the navigator. And here you go. So I recommend if you are going to use this for yourself or to teach someone else, the first thing that you should do is go here and, and do a file and make a copy. So it will make a copy for you. And here you can play with the permissions for the user, for the group, and for the others, read, write, execute. So here, for instance, I'm, I'm saying that myself as the user, I can do everything so i add four and two and one which you already know now that are two to the power of zero two to the power of one and two to the power of two the one the the the, the ones in my group they can they can only read and execute and i actually am not going to allow them to 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 read the program i just want them to be able to execute the program so you see as i change the permissions in here the number in here changes and for the others, well, okay, the others in my system can also execute and only execute. So I have 711. So if I do ch mod 711, I will have rwx, nothing, nothing x, and nothing, nothing x. So let's just try very quickly to see if it works. So ch mod. 711, num proc, and now let's take a look, exactly as I wanted. I can read, write, execute, the ones in my group can ex only execute, and the others in my systems can, can in my system can only execute. Let, let me stop my screen sharing right now. Okay, so I'm back here with you. Uh, this things again, they are so important for the life of a system administrator that they are covered in our most essential Linux certification, which is called Linux Essentials. It is uh, some people that are just starting with uh, 
web servers, for instance. Uh, people tend to, like if I install WordPress or something like that, people will, something doesn't work. So people go ahead and do a siege mod 777 in all of the files in the in the folder for the, the pages that you are serving to the web. Now they have the permission that everybody can do everything. And this is very dangerous because if someone uh, finds, out, finds out a way to get into your system, they will do that through the files that you allow the, the permission to do everything they want. So never use permissions like 777. The, the, the golden rule here, in, if you are a system administrator, only give permissions for those who deserve the permissions, for those who know what to do. Only place those people in your system, the users in your systems, in the admin or in the pseudo group if they actually need to do this kind of thing and another important thing if you are uh, most of the systems now as you install they create a user they ask you to provide a password for that user and they will add this user to the pseudo group so that the user that you that you create when you're installing your system will be able to ask super users to do things for them uh, most modern modern systems they don't even have a password for the root user so if, so if someone is going is, is able to get into your system uh, as the root user doesn't have a password it will be very difficult for them to become a, a root user so that is it that's this is uh, pretty much the things that are covered in the linux uh, essentials uh, topic five, security. Uh, of course, do take a look at learning.lpi.org that you'll see more things in there if you are going to take this certification. But here um, in this half an hour, I just wanted to tell you that these are the, the things that you, you need to worry about if you, if you are going to administer uh, a Linux system. Thank you very much uh i do not see any questions in here but if you do have questions let me just switch to my terminal again i will write my email in here oh i only have three minutes right now so let me clear i am cbroad at lpi.org so feel free to to email me and i am also cesar Broad and now social networks and here with me are my friends Juan Iba at lpi.org and Hernan Paches at lpi.org. Thank you all and thank you guys at the Document Foundation for inviting us to be here at your event. It is very good to be here with you. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.